Hello everyone, my name is Robin and welcome back to Doki Doki Salvation Remake. Yeah, it's, it's been like a little more than a week since I've returned to this series. But, uh, well, things happen. But anyways, the, on the last episode was the first time of bringing back poem readings. And once Sari uh, shared her poem, I well, started crying and left the room. It was because her poems revealed, revealed more of her darkest secrets that, that she normally wanted to reveal. Luckily for her, MC and Monica reassure her things are fine, and since we left off here, let's continue from there. I'm dreaming again. Lisa feels that way. Looking around at my surroundings, I'm back in the void I found myself a long time ago. Nothing I can do about you, is there? At this point, I'm a ticking time bomb of who knows what. Why I disappear? Why I remain here but as a husk of my former self? And if it were the former, what's even the point of keeping myself alive? Ah! I'm blinded as the world shifts instantaneously and I'm thrown into the school hallway. Did I not just... Robin! The first one here! Thanks for being early! Me again. Or a version of me. I go over to one of the class doors and peek in. It's funny, I thought at least Jerry would be here right now. Hold on. If I'm right, this is like... The day of the festival where MC goes home to check on Sayori and then she's, uh... Playing hangman? What day is this? I don't remember any of this. I was looking trying to avoid drawing attention to myself. Watch as Monica moves around the classroom, placing a little booklets on each of the desks. Yeah. Wait, it's the day of the festival. But this never happened. What's going on? I'm not even shown this. Went towards Robin, knowing damn well that it's not the Robin I know. This isn't the world I know. Began to put two and two together. This is... Surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on days of this important, she'd try a little harder. The day she was supposed to die. By pure instinct, I raised my hands up and typed in the console. Ball flat on the floor, then whisked away to Sayori's house instantly. I have control again. My train of thought stops when I realize what's about to happen, or what I'm about to see. Rush inside her house. I stop my way upstairs. It's hopeless. It's already happened, hasn't it? What am I even doing here? Why is the game showing me this? Am I still subconsciously looking for closure? To see what a world would like if my plans actually carried out normally? But why? The game just doing this out of spite? To punish me for what I've done? Reach her bedroom door and open it. Ah, uh, God. Nearly fall down on my knees. But yeah, it's zooming in. But I hold strong. Same way I always have. Sayori? My voice shivers. Why is it shiver shivering? But did I do this to you too? No, oh, how could I? You were already like this, weren't you? She was beginning to move down my cheeks. Why am I crying? My vision grows blurry as I try to wipe the tears away. No, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. Lying to myself for so long, telling myself that this is what happened. I want what I this is what I wanted. It's how I wanted things to be. I keep trying to justify every single little thing I did. I can't justify letting one of my best friends die. Nothing justifies that. But even still, even with her lifeless body hangs right in front of me, side of me still can't let go. She isn't real. She isn't real. She isn't real. She. My legs give out as I fall down to my knees. My eyes never leaving Sayori's. Signs of struggle. Blood, the blood on her fingers, tear stains on her gray face. Reminder of this reality that was very close to transpiring just a few, mo few months ago. I tried to reach out, desperate to hold her, but my now trembling hands grasp nothing but empty air. Just saw bracks my body. It feels as if a piece of me has been ripped away. The weight of my guilt presses upon my chest, suffocating me as I question every word I've ever said. Every action I've ever taken, one's untaken. Memories of a laughter, support, and shared dreams began to flood my mind. Vibrant spirit and unwavering optimism that defines her existence. I was supposed to just... this happen. I wake up. To wake up from this nightmare. But I give in to the raw feeling of grief. Allowing my tears to fall on the hard floor as I let myself feel the pain of everything I wanted to do. Yeah, I, uh... I didn't really bring attention to this because I was, well, obviously reading the dialogue. But... Um, I really like the the soundtrack that was playing in, in there. So you're saying you never wondered why we have soccer tryouts at school? Nope. Not even for a little bit? Nuh-uh. -uh. So much for trying to spark up a conversation. Hey guys, I'm to find you two here. Sarah and I decided to find Natsuki and Yuri during lunch. Just to change things up, I guess. Hey, <laughs> you guys mind if we sit with you for today? Nah, nah, come sit over here. Sarah and I sit ourselves... Down next to the vending machine while Yuri and Natsuki sit on the bottom of the stairs. Convenient. I have a few coins. Do you want any snacks, Yuri? You don't have to. Cool. More for me, then. 
<laughs> hey! You're forcing me into it, meanie. Cute. As cute as you, though. Uh, I'm not cute! That came out of nowhere. Effective, though. Sorry, I meant... <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely not. Mm, yes, yeah, quite an appalling creature. <laughs> Decide which is worse. <laughs> At least you know I wasn't being honest the first time. So was I. Hey, you know something that I have never shared with you guys before? What? I've always been a little bit of a geek over the weather. Really? You and the weather? Don't you have to be smart for that stuff? Yeah, yeah, whatever. That's interesting, Robin. Do you have any cool facts to share? Not really. It's just something I really enjoy doing. For example, when I see weather come like a typhoon, I can't help but get extremely excited for one. Really? I do too. So do I. The sheer power of Mother Nature is truly something to get excited about. I know, right? When the wind begins to howl and thunder starts booming every second, I wonder if Natsuki's gonna be like, Okay, shut up, nerds! And when it's practically raining sideways, the sky turns into a massive lightning light show. Jeez, I'm surrounded by a bunch. Of yep, I didn't think so. Storms or extreme weather don't you don't wait, storms or extreme weather don't excite you? I really see how something super scary can be exciting. Well, it's not like we're actively putting ourselves in danger or anything. Maybe he's right. I love the thrill of a good thunderstorm when I'm inside the comfort of my own home. I wouldn't be opposed to a storm chasing adventure though. <laughs> now you're talking. Count me in. Count me out. I'll say in the comfort of my own home. Thank you very much. What do you think Monica's thoughts are on a storm chasing? Uh, sure. Speaking of Monica, where does she usually go for lunch anyway? I'm just picking that up. I don't know. I think she usually hangs out in the music room. That's right. Doesn't she know how to play piano? She does. I think it'd be a good idea if she all performed for us sometime. Sounds like fun. I wonder how long she's been practicing. Let's not talk about. Let's not talk so much about her behind her back, though. That's that's low. Yeah, I agree. We should invite her to join us for lunch. It's weird how we hang out with each other at least once a week, but we only ever see Monica in the club. I mean, can you blame us? Sort of how she rolled for a while. She's very distant from all of us. It's true. That doesn't mean we should try. She's still our friend. I agree. Monica was the one who brought us all together. We should reciprocate that. I'd oppose to that. Do you guys want to plan something for her? Yeah, what about a picnic? Sounds like fun. I don't think I've ever had a picnic in my entire life. Oh, you're in for a treat then. I know, perfect place to go. Natsuki and I went there once to read together. Yuri, that's supposed to be our secret hangout! Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean- That's eh, fine, actually. No real reason to keep it a secret from anybody, that's lame. I think it should be a great spot. Indeed. It's very quiet on school days. It'd be perfect. a perfect picnic spot. If we're planning it on a school day, anyway. Good point. When did you have- Wait, when did you want to have this, Yuri? Mmm, let's do it tomorrow. We can have our picnic in place of the club meeting. Any objections? Good to be. No complaints. I'm down. Great, so what's everyone gonna bring? I call dibs on bringing plates. Hey, you got the easiest stuff! I'll bring cupcakes. Sweet. Can I help you bake them? We were really well together last time. Sure, sounds like a good time. Making tea for everyone. And I'll bring a blanket as well. What kind of picnic would it be without a blanket to sit on? Perfect, sounds like a plan. Now, should we keep this a surprise for Monica or should we tell her? We should probably tell her. Who knows if she'll even approve the idea. Fine by me, we'll tell her about it at the meeting today. Sounds like a plan. <sighs> so Yuri and I walk into the club room, ready to tell Monica our plan for tomorrow. Except she's not here. Let me guess. Hey again. You guessed it. I'm used to it at this point. I can't help but feel worried about her. I mean, remember when what she told us last week? She's going through a lot right now. All right. The club door slides open, signifying Monica's entrance. Monica, we have something to sh- uh. Oh, jeez. Yeah, because she did witness the death scene. Uh, when she was messing with the code. Monica has bags on her eyes and looks incredibly distraught, almost as if she lost someone close to her. Itsuki, Yuri, and I share confused glances. Oh, Monica, you okay? What's going on? Siri returns the hug regardless of her confusion. Sorry, I'm so sorry. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. Monica and Siri break off from each other. Okay, just needed a hug. That's alright. Everybody needs a hug every once in a while. You feeling a little better now? You look very tired. Yeah, a little. That hug energy i thought before, at least something, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad I helped you feel better. Even just a little. No, awkward silence sweeps over us. Uh, ah, uh, right. Uh, what, is it, what, is, what was it you wanted to say, Sayori? Oh, yeah, I wanted to tell you about this cool new plan I had for the meeting tomorrow. He's, we wanted to have a picnic, and we wanted to invite you, especially. You've done so much for us, yet we rarely get to all hang out with you as a group outside of school. So I figured let's change that. Really? You'd all want to have me along? Of course. Maybe a club without you. Thanks, guys. Love to join you. 
Notice Monica's eyes begin to well up with tears again, but she swiftly wipes them away. Sounds like a wonderful time. Is there anything you'd like for me to bring? Well, we don't exactly have any actual food yet, do we? Unless you consider cupcakes to be a nutritious meal. Right. I can bring some sandwiches for everyone. I'm a vegetarian, so I'll bring my own meal. Sounds great. Looks like everyone, everything's set in stone then. So, what do you want to do now? Monica looks away for a moment. Give me a second. Monica walks up to the front of the room and pulls out some papers from her bag. Well, now we got that out of the way. I wanted to ask how far along everyone's in the book. I know Gary already finished. Don't embarrass me. It's okay. I finished over the weekend. So did I. Wait, I'm the one. <laughs> That's so beyond lame. I can't be my. It can't be my fault. I'm just so used to reading mangas. If you like, you can read together. I don't mind rereading a few chapters. You do that? Well, it's just a suggestion. Sorry, that was too weird for you. No, I wasn't. I just wasn't expecting you to offer something like that. I'm down. Sounds like a fun time. Great, we can get started then and get you caught up. Ah, they're really, they're getting along so well now. All right, those two were polar opposites when I first met them. Now they're reading together. Friendship blossoms in the strangest of places. Is that a famous quote from someone? If you mean a famous quote from Sayori, then yes. B, a quote. Okay, I'm back. I see Natsuki and Yuri are catching up on their reading. I'm not. Natsuki was just. Shut up. <laughs> Glad to see it then. Finished my book too. By a long time ago, actually. Damn. Mostly because I already. <laughs> that makes sense. Speaking of things that make sense, could I ask you and Sayori to do me a huge favor? Sure, what is it? I loved her poem jam idea so much yesterday, so I wanted to have something similar to it sometime soon. I wanted to recreate the festival and have some poem presentations, big cookies, all the fixings. I don't want us to miss out on something we all look forward to after all, which I could reiterate. Monica places her hand on Sayori's shoulder. That wasn't your fault, nor will it ever be, and I'll make up for that by remaking it. I think it should be a fun time for everyone. Of course, we just got done reciting some poems, so it'll be some time it'll be time before we host this. Which leads me to what I need your help with. Could you guys bring some supplies to the other classroom? Just so we can have it prepared here when we get started on preparations. So like crayons, markers, all that junk. Sure, I know exactly where they could be. I've been to that room before. Perfect. See if you can find some poster paper as well. Uh, what? Spanish for boss. When in the world did you start to... I don't know, it's cool. I agree. It's quite cool. Now, get going, you two. Monica walks off walks off towards the front of the room again. Well, alright then. Lead the way, Sayori. Yep, follow me. Exploring empty classrooms is the most fun you can have while you're in school. Eh, I can think of a few other things. Sayori and I exit the room. I follow along happily as I watch Sayori hum and skip around the hallway. It's amazing how Sayori is able to find the pleasure in the smallest of things. I think I've taken that for granted. It takes some real strength to see a small little errand as some grand adventure. At least I'm assuming that's how she sees it. Hey Sayori, I noticed you got a little bit down back there when Monica mentioned redoing the festival. You always see right through me, but I think it's a great idea. Monica only did what she thought was right to do. She wouldn't have done it just to make me feel bad. I suppose you're right. Here we are. Let's begin the mission, Agent. Mission, eh? Make a finger gun with my hands and hold it up. Okay, Sayori. Breach. Yeah! <laughs> Jay slides the door open and rolls in the classroom. If that were real, I'd probably be shot. <laughs> no way. Not when I've got your back. Played enough tactical esp uh, espionage? I'm not sure how, that's, how you pronounce that. Espionage action video games to know how to be a good in a firefight. Yay, come on, let's find the supplies. Follow Sayori to the r closet towards the back of the classroom. Let's see. Ah, crayons. And the best brand, too. They sure are dirty, though. Right, what else was it she said we needed? Poster paper? Let me squeeze in here to check. Sayori begins reading each of the colors out loud. Sure, let me just find my favorite color real quick. Look around the nearby cubby holes for signs of poster paper, which, no luck. What even is your favorite color, anyway? Light blue. Oop, dropped one on accident. Hey, Blue, pretty hard to find it all. Ah! Jerry bent over and smacked right on the shelf. Falls to the floor and crayons spill all over the place. Ow, wow, 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 wow. Ah, jeez, you okay? Can you stop what I'm doing and rush your aid? My forehead. She clutches her forehead. Guess that's a no. Sound like it hurt. Let me see. You guys hear you by the waist and pull it out the closet. Come on, you have to move your hands if you want me to see. But it hurts. Just for a quick second, I have to see how bad it is. She slowly moves her hands away from her forehead. God, brains everywhere. <laughs> I'm messing around. Ow! Take it easy. Then they brush your bangs around. Ow! 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 
pretty big red mark on her head. It's bump and, and the bump's starting to form too. Shoot, it's gonna swell. She probably get some ice. Maybe the other's gonna help. Robin, Monica, she know what to do. What would Monica do? Uh, you don't have to do this for me. Perfectly okay with looking like. Well, now I know you're okay. You wouldn't make a joke like that otherwise. But still, I should get you something. It's bad to leave a bump like that untreated. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Pats her in the shoulder and head out towards the nearest vending machine. Oh, what? Hey, how's it going with Sayori? Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> you find those supplies yet? Ooh, I actually need to get her a drink. She hit her head on some shelf. What? Oh no, I should have gone with you two. No, oh, it's fine. She's okay. I just need to get her something cold for it. Here, let me buy her juice. Oh wait, you don't have... Before I could protest any further, Monica pulls out a few coins from her coin purse and places them inside the machine. She taps in two letters that correspond to some apple juice. Here, nice and cold. Thanks. You didn't have to do this for me though. I could have afforded it. It's fine. Just feel like I'm partly responsible for this. Should have gone myself. Sure, it's fine, but I better hurry. You want some? You want to come see her? Monica looks away for a second and takes some time to respond, which only raises my anxiousness. I just see her in there by herself. No, it's okay. It's best if you just. It's just you and her. Okay, sure. Gotta get going then. That was a little weird. What was she even doing there? Oh well. Now we're thinking about that now. I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She's trying to clumsily scoop crayons back into the box while still holding on her other her other palm on her forehead. Hey there. Hey, hey, they were already in all the wrong spots before I spilled them all. Take it easy. Use this. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. Ah, it's nice and cold. She opens the cap to drink from it. Ah, hey, don't do that! It's for your head! Ah, sorry, God. Jeez, you hit your head that hard? Sayori places the bottle against the bump on her head. Stings, I know. Start feeling better soon. Squat down so I... Now at eye level with Sayori. I'm picking up the crayons and placing them in proper order. What is it? This reminds you of growing up, doesn't it? What do you mean? I think I remember the when Sayori and I used to play outside all the time. Oh, yeah, you weren't really a good... <laughs> I mean, where are you? You never really noticed until I actually got hurt. I fall and scrape myself or get a bump on my head like this. And then I cried really hard. But you always tried to give me, get, get me to stop crying and take care of me. It was almost like you blamed yourself for what happened. And you didn't want me to get in trouble. Look away from Sayori and focus on gathering up the last of the crayons. Even though it wasn't really your fault at all, you know? did do that, didn't I? Yeah, I guess I was just to focus on myself. I never really realized that I was pushing you to do things you couldn't. Don't, I don't think that's true. You're pretty selfless, too. You're always rushing to help me, even though I'm just clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. That's embarrassing, don't call me that! You really think that? Yeah. Well, this feels natural to me. I don't really know how else to explain it. But I think I like your clumsiness. Really? How can you like something like that? It makes you unique. Great. Solid flirting attempt here. I probably just made her feel worse. <laughs> so silly, Robin. Right. I only do these things because I care. Even though it took a while for me to admit that. Robin, I'm really glad nothing has changed between us. Even after all this time, I'm glad that you're more open with me. Even if it's hard for you to believe you're being genuine. Do you think we can stay like this forever? Forever, huh? I'm being honest with myself. Killing Sayori and his friendship has been one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Even though it's pretty rough most of the time. I guess I'm still doing what I always have. Helping Sayori when she's hurt. I sure hope so. You're already m my ride or die at this point, aren't you? Ride or die, eh? Wait, oh god, it's not bad! <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I'm just happy that we're together like this. It's like old times. She has a whimsical expression on her face. What are you thinking about, Sayori? I'm thinking? I'm used to... You used to be a little bit of a... <laughs> oh... That's why I'm, <laughs> it sounds weird, it's, but also good. It's kind of like a weird dream come true. I don't want you to be afraid to make some the same jokes you used to before. What jokes? Those are bad jokes. <laughs> Never thought so. They made, they, they're what made you so fun to be around. I'd argue a lot of that was me being genuinely annoyed. Deep down, I just felt awkward and weird around you. But why? Oh, you... And I felt bad for having such a long gap of us not talking with each other. I mean, we're still friends, but the idea of going back to how things used to be was strange. I understand. It'll take me some time to get used to. So like I said before, be patient with me, okay? Of course. We should head back. I'm feeling better now. I don't want Monica to worry about us. Good luck with that. She's the one who bought you that apple juice. <laughs> oh, it's a lie on my bum under my bangs. Here he hops to her feet. Ah! 
I see. I knew you got up too fast. Come here. You know, lock my arms, but see already didn't help her walk out the room. She walks her back to the classroom and watch her try and cover her butt with her bangs. To no avail. Then when we make it back to the club room. Sayori, you okay? Yeah, you heard? She's okay, took care of it. I was playing with some crayons and smacked my head in the shelf. Really? Can I see? <laughs> That's okay, Monica. That's pretty sensitive. Okay, as long as you're alright. Did you mean the supplies? Yep, got them all here. We placed some crayons and the other poster and other poster making supplies down on the desk. We got the poster paper. Great. We're all prepared for the festival. The no bad very festival nouveau. That's <laughs> nouveau. Make the O sound at the end. Got it. Nouveau. Now I can speak French. United. Now uh, it's French. Nice work. Thanks. Well, that should conclude today's meeting. Gary, Sugi, did you finish reading? Almost. Got a few more chapters ago, and I'm all finished. Great. And let's end this meeting off with another one of my writing tips of the day. Come on, let's hear it. It's easy to get a bit lost in your own self-doubts when writing or working on anything creative. Thoughts can, thoughts can sound like, I feel inferior to something that came before, which can be incredibly demotivating. It's important to try and remember that there's one thing those projects will never have. It's you. You have all the power in the world to make a story uniquely yours, no matter what has come before. So if there's anything you find yourself struggling with, or if you're feeling insecure, just remember, stay true to yourself and believe in what you can do. The project will flourish as a result. Thanks for listening. Siri and I go our separate ways as we arrive back home. She's going to have Natsuki come over to prepare the stuff for tomorrow, and I should probably do the same. The nearest store is only a short distance away, so I immediately start heading there. Gotta get out of the way before now before I get lazy and put it off to the last minute. Alright guys, so I actually think I'm going to end it off here, so that has been Doki Doki Salvation Remake for now. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all the next one.